Welcome to Dr. Roger and Friends, the bright side of longevity, hosted by three peas in a podcast, Doc Roger, Teresa, and Danielle. Thanks for joining us for Coffee and Conversation. Welcome back to The Bright Side. You're listening to part two of our interview with financial planner, Kathy McMillan, the Wealth Health Connection. Thanks for joining us. You know, if my next question, you already kind of answered because, you know, this podcast and what, what Danielle and I do, and you too, really, uh, is about healthy longevity. And uh, we're living longer and longer. And if we do that, well, sick, that can cost you a lot of money. But health, you want uh, the quality to be such that you can continue to do the, those things. So healthy longevity uh, makes your job a little harder, although worthwhile, probably, right? Yes. Well, I always say to my clients, money is an interesting commodity. First of all, if you have a bag of money, but you can't get off the sofa, what's the point? And money is really what it gets you, what it gets your family, what it gets you around you. And you have an obligation when you have money to up your charitable. And that just produces those endorphins that give you that feeling of well-being. There's a Stanford study on it. And at last the glow, it's some sort of glow and creates these chemicals that keep you uplifted and feeling great for up to seven days. Now on the mortality thing, I have to tell this funny story. So two clients, uh, a a couple uh, work with their, I work with their brother who owns some car dealerships. They're much more modest, but I take care of the whole crew. I'm part of the family. And um, I always update, we do a full financial plan for everyone. Full financial plan involving wills, powers of attorney, insurance, And the core of it is your money, but it's better invested when I know all the other stuff and all the other obligations. So I've worked with them for a number of years and periodically we update the projections. So I go, here you are, I've taken you to 90 or hundred and this is based on what you're saving and based on a 5% rate of return, 2% inflation, here's what you'll be able to spend and I give you the last check as you go out the door. So you better <laughs> hope my calculations. And I've done this periodically every three, four years for them. So then they got serious about retirement. So they invite me over. They love to feed me and whoa, she can cook. So I rarely do house calls, but if you're cooking, I'm showing. <laughs> and, uh, so we right, have this great lunch. Yeah, yeah, good to know. We have this great lunch and I get out my projections. And they go into shock in front of me and they go, this is not enough. And they go, well, well, <laughs> so I go into shock. <laughs> I said, but we looked at these before. So I'd taken them to, I think, 95. And they said, just take us to 85. <laughs> <laughs> that was the question in the back of my mind. Has anybody come back and said, you know, I want some hard living and I want to have fun. Just get me to 80. I was waiting for that. <laughs> Rock on, rock on. Yeah. So I, I, there, I think I was almost speechless for a nanosecond, but I always have. I think a good advisor has plan A, B, and C. So I go, here's the numbers. Now, do you, do you like those numbers? Uh, it appears that you don't. <laughs> so what can we do? Okay, well, we could work a year longer. We could bring down our expectations. We could downsize our home because uh, if you have your 85th birthday party and I have a hitman joining you, this is not a good plan. (laughs) So there's many things you can do to adjust and wiggle. I had a a client's building a house in Nova Scotia. They were uh, retiring and they built this big honking house. And all the time I'm going, the numbers don't work. Sometimes you can't. You can lead a horse to water. He said, the numbers don't work. The numbers don't work. You've got a big mortgage on it. I don't know about that area in resale. Can we have plan A, B, and C? And they, you know, people go, yeah, yeah. 
you come up with it and then they go, they hit something and they go, yeah, yeah. So I said, this is a walkout, right? And they said, yeah. I said, can you build a separate door for Airbnb? Because you're on the water. And they said, actually, we can. We just caught it in time. I said, have you looked for part-time jobs in Nova Scotia? Something you might like to do. Um, yeah, we'll kind of look around. So maybe you could build the house so with an eye to resale. So we had a couple of plans. So, of course, the inevitable happened. I happened to be in Halifax for a conference. Out I go. Uh, I always say you can tell who rules by the size of the garage is up against the kitchen. He had three garages. I took pictures. You could have hung art in those garages. <laughs> and guess what happened? They were too tight for money. They had a couple of repairs. The dishwasher was the trigger. She said, I have no bandwidth for a $600 dishwasher. So I said, luckily, with COVID, property values on the water went up and we came out of it. But as she was leading into it, she took in some Airbnb. She got a little income. They didn't like the part-time jobs. <laughs> <laughs> so we were on about plan F at that point. But it managed to work out. I could see it coming. They were prepared. So they weren't despondent over some of the decisions they had to make. Now you had planted those seeds of, of thought. We train coaches, Kathy, you know, to oh. lifestyle and, and to, uh, to be able to deal with people's transitions in their lifestyle and their health. And uh, you took the course. You obviously did. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. This is amazing, isn't it, Danielle? You're a coach. I'm finding and I'm fascinated by the two contrasting belief systems. One, I don't have enough. And you're trying to say, yes, you do. And the other, it's like you're saying you don't have enough. And they living moment to moment and not thinking about what's going to happen five years or 10 years. So being able to navigate with those extreme beliefs is just completely fascinating to me. You get all kinds, right, Kathy? Oh, my. Never a dull day. Masterpiece is driven by data and powered by content. Maximizing healthy longevity is achievable at all times with the right metrics and content enabling informed decisions. Take the next step and learn more about what Powered by Masterpiece can do for your community and residents. Learn more at MyMasterpieceLiving.com. Because you come from such a holistic approach, what kind of healthy lifestyle tips do you find yourself giving each of your clients? Are there a few general takeaways that you give to everybody? So my people around me, my community, I, I don't even call them my clients. They're almost like family. Know that we lead by example. I'm deep and holistic. They know back before our whole pandemic thing that I would take off to a spa, La Costa, um, the Chopra Center, meditate for a week take lessons on food as uh, medicine. So they know our lifestyle. Uh, they know about our charitable. They know about all this. But I have to say this, and Roger hasn't said a word about this. They need to read Live Long, Die Short because it says it there. I'll summarize, pure food, great exercise, a sense of community, always learning, a valued elder. And that's what made the difference. So when I met Roger, I, I was up to the front engaged in this robust conversation with this such an interesting man. He gifted me his book. <laughs> now, to get back to Calgary, I have to fly out of Florida, I have to land somewhere, and then I have to switch planes and go to Calgary. So the travel time is 10 hours. So <laughs> I got to the airport, I cracked the book. As we were taxing into the Calgary airport, I was getting through the last couple of chapters. Like you need to get some education and knowledge. You need to eat basic pure food, good sleep. That social connection, it's proven. It keeps your mind active. You feel that you're 
connected. I think this is primal. This is in our DNA. Living on your own, you know, it's like being on the ice floe, pushed out. You know, we need our community. So I think you need to do some good reading. And I would start with that book. The difference in uh, Roger's book and the, the chapter I love the most, nobody addresses this, is being a valued elder. So our society in the Americas, we get older, they put us on the shelf, we get dusty, and we become dusty. Finding a young finance student, a young financial advisor to introduce me to so I can mentor them. Oh, my goodness, they're going to keep me young. And I've got 30 years of experience. Oh, my goodness. Do I feel valued? I love that part of the book. I love it. Well, thank you. Those are very nice comments. Uh, you know, you're part, you're my part-time publicist, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I love it? that book. I bought cases. Uh, you did. And I, I did. <laughs> I am so pleased. That, that's so nice. Well, um, this is hard to do for you. You're, you're so sophisticated in this area, Kathy, but say someone has, and it's probably not a whole lot far from where I am, has, you know, have not paid attention to this financial aspect of all that it takes to age in a better way in a, in a, in the health wealth connection is uh, what would you have them do as a first step towards addressing that? You would ask them coaching questions. I know that, but what could you tell someone or what would you, uh, what direction would you start to nudge them uh, in order to start to pay attention to these things? So contemplating something is much more agonizing than actually embarking on it. Once you get started, you go, oh my goodness. So all these fears and all these hesitations and all this procrastination is not serving you well. And it's causing anxiety and stress, which we know how that affects our health. So I say in any category, just get started. So in the financial category, depending if, if you're young, just start saving a hundred bucks a month. Um, if you're, you know, depending if, if you've got money here, there and everywhere, just maybe start asking some friends that you respect so what is it that you do with your money? I ask it all the time. <laughs> I feel very comfortable. I'm at the vet. I go, do you guys have a pension plan? I'm golfing with a guy who's a lawyer. On, uh, so we had somebody join our twosome. I said, Jim, do you have a pension plan? Like, so I ask that naturally. I'm naturally curious. But uh, so he didn't. So, <laughs> um, so just even getting started. So making those first phone calls, like my lady did to start interviewing, start phoning, getting a feel for people, engage a professional. It's a complicated world. I don't think I'm well educated enough and I can't fit my credentials on my business card. Like there's lots of stuff going on. This is a personal relationship. So depending on where you are in the age group, the net worth group, make the first step, just make the first step. After you make that first step, I think you'll be, uh, you know, going into a canter, then a full run. I know you're a horse person. So it's just getting on the saddle, just get on the saddle, ask people you respect. In terms of food, <laughs> start noting what you eat. Food is medicine. Note what you eat. With analysis comes awareness. With exercise, maybe just walk, get a Fitbit, walk 100 steps a day. Just, just, and then two weeks down the road, walk 110 steps. Small stuff makes differences. And it makes you feel good. So don't set these huge lofty goals. My Lord, that's intimidating. Start with something small and you go, whoa, look at me. I'm a winner. I phoned that person. I, I got off the sofa. I pushed those uh, Doritos aside. You know, tick, then you go on. I read this in a recent New York Times article where women, particularly in like 45 to 55 year range, 
don't typically talk about money with their friends. They don't ask how much are you making? And they make often make less than men because they just don't know they can ask for it. They don't know what they should be asking for. So just opening that door saying, well, what are you doing with your money is so empowering instead of isolating, bringing people to really have those conversations with each other is so important. And women are interested in the aspect of they, once they have someone they love, they talk about it to all their ladies. And in turn, you get their friendship group. So they're really great for referrals. Fantastic. This is great advice. And Danielle, it's all about kites and isn't it small steps to wherever you want to go. So once again, we're very much in line. This is uh, this has been revealing and I knew it would. I've learned a lot and I'm going to continue to learn a lot. Yeah, I need to, Kathy. So we'll, we're going to stay in touch. And, you know, but I have to mention one thing. Only a Canadian would give the analogy of being on an ice floe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> well, again, thank you, Kathy, for the time you've given us. You're very generous. And uh, I, I think that uh, uh, we're even more aligned than I thought before we started all this. Uh, mm. to, to hear you speak of these things and uh, your coaching, your your kitesen approach, your compassion, your concern for their health, the concern for them as human beings that that's that's so much more than i think most people uh think of when they think of someone who guides them in their financial journey so thank you for doing that We want to continue to provide information that is valuable and reliable to our listeners. We welcome your comments and suggestions for topics that are important to you. Please see the description of this episode to contact the Brightside team. You've been listening to Dr. Roger and Friends, The Bright Side of Longevity. If you like the show, please rate and review, and be sure to click to follow. Follow. 